Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Are you ready? Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Beautiful day here in Maine. Beautiful day. Not a cloud in the sky. Sunny. Uh, 72 degrees. A little breeze. Beautiful day. I mean, best day of the week. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we're going to go right back into the shit tomorrow. Here. <laughs> so, like I said, one day of uh, good weather in Maine, you pay for it with two or three days sometimes even a week of bad weather so uh, people uh, have to enjoy the weather when it comes okay so uh, I know I had said in my previous videos that I wasn't going to watch last night's debate um, and I didn't I didn't watch it last night's last night's debate and I'm glad that I didn't because when I uh, uh, had my coffee there and I sat down to uh, look at the news um, the things that were coming up you know of course i was you know curious as to what everyone thought of the debate um i was kind of uh at first disappointed but then i wasn't really surprised uh you know i, I it br brought back yet another example of what i say democrats trying so hard to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory uh and it goes you know, it's it's repetitive. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't understand how Democrats could be so stupid as to put Biden on the stage in the condition he was in last night. I really, I didn't think that they would be that dumb. You know, they said, oh, well, he was sick. He had a sore throat. He had a cold. Okay, well, the, from the clips that they played, yeah, it kind of sounded like he was a little bit congested. But if they thought he was good enough to be on the fucking stage, then he couldn't have been that sick. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, I'm sure they would have said something about it and said, well, can we postpone it a day or two or something, you know? Um, why not? But no, they went ahead and put him out there. And in the condition he was in, that kind of blew a hole in the theory of all the Republicans this week saying, oh, they're, they're going to put Biden on a stage. He's going to be pumped up on drugs. He's going to be climbing the walls. Well, no, that didn't happen, obviously, because in the, con in, in the way he was. He was, his mind was, his thoughts were muddled. Uh, he was trying to answer a question about abortion, and then in mid-answer, mid he sidetracked into the border issue. Uh, you know, I mean, he just, he was all over the place, you know. And so, yeah, he, he wasn't really on the game. Okay, he really wasn't. He was there, but he wasn't present, as they say, you know. Um, and I felt like, you know, this should have been, you know, a much better performance because he gave a State of the Union address speech here uh, that was a home run. Okay, he nailed it out of the park. But what happened last night, I don't know if it was because they overprepped him or because they didn't help him to be lucid more, I guess, you know, uh, before he went out on the stage. I don't know. He's 81 years old. He's too old. I mean, uh, you know, he, both these candidates are too old to be running for president. This should be a goddamn good example of why we can't keep putting old people into fucking politics. You know, they they just, they'll fall apart on you. You know, it, it takes, you know, one misstep, one bad cold or something and all of a sudden that person is is laid up for days and weeks on in or they're just you know or they die you know not everybody ages well 
okay? I mean, we all can't be William Shatner here at 93 years old and still and, and taking a rocket ship, a rocket to space. We can't all be like that, okay? Some of us age quicker than others. And obviously Biden simply just, you know, he's too old. I don't even know now by watching, what, by seeing those clips from last night, I don't even know if he's even going to be able to do his four years as president if he wins. And lo and behold, the conversation now is shifting to Kamala Harris. The Democrats are looking to her. They want to put, they, they're talking about putting her at the top of the, uh, of the list now, the top billing here on the campaign. Okay. I'm thinking you guys should have thought of that way, way back, okay, instead of going out, reaching out for, for, for uh, Biden. And I'll tell you right now, not a lot of people really have that much to say about Kamala Harris because she doesn't do anything that we know of, okay? Yeah, she, she's been out there a little bit more than usual, giving speeches and stuff like that, but you know, she's not really somebody that's in the newspapers a lot. I mean, it's just, you know, we don't really... You know, we don't really know of her like we know Biden, okay? So that, I think, would be a mistake if they think that now in, in mid, you know, just f less than four, uh, five months outside of an election, they want to switch the ticket, okay? That's too late. You do that, you're, you're guaranteeing Trump's going to win, okay? Forget it. And, uh, you know, now they're sweating, okay? Well... All I can say is, Democrats, you made this bed. Now you're going to have to lay in it. You're going to screw it up, and Trump's going to win, just like he won the first time when everybody wanted to see Bernie Sanders in there, but no, you could not have a Jewish person in there as president. Okay? Uh, you guys wanted Hillary in there for whatever reason, and Hillary, you tried to get her, and she lost to Trump. That goes to show you she was too weak to begin with. You guys squandered the primary, you guys rigged it so that way Hillary could get it to be the, the, the running to person to run for president, and she, she wasn't enough. She just wasn't enough, okay? But Bernie Sanders, on the other hand, he had ideas that energized the youth out there in this country, and they wanted to see him president, okay? He would have got it for sure. I know he would have, okay? He had the numbers, and it scared the shit out of the Democrats that he was getting so popular, all right? So... So here we are again, running against Trump, and <laughs> the Democrats are out there uh, putting the fucking uh, jinx in the goddamn system here, you know, uh, and if Trump wins, despite everything Trump's done and everything, uh, I the Democrats deserve, and, and you know, really the defeat because they did it. They created, they will create their own defeat here in this. And that's why they can't be trusted to win this election. And that's why I said from the start of this year, this year is not going to end very nice. Okay. It's not going to be a very nice ending to this year. I really, I could see it coming, you know, even, even in January when it looked so certain that, you know, Trump, you know, was going to answer for all his crimes and all that. And I knew, no, 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 no. He's got his hands in a lot of pies in this fucking country, and he's going to keep it, he's going to delay, he's going to do all this kind of shit in order to make sure that by the time November rolls around, his chances are still going to be relatively decent to win. And that's what he's been doing all this time. And now the Democrats dropped the ball last night, and everybody's saying, well, it's one debate, there's another one. Now, Trump doesn't even have to show for the next one if he doesn't want to, okay? He's going he's gonna to take this victory, and I can tell you, he ain't going to come back for a, a, a chance at blundering the next one. OK, and I don't think the Democrats really want to see Biden back up on the stage debating Trump again, because after what we saw last night, it confirmed much about what Republicans were saying about uh, Biden uh, all along about, you know, he's not all there. OK, he really isn't. And even though he might have been doing a good job as president, you got to also remember he ain't the only one sitting in the White House doing this job. He, he has the goal, and everybody else helps him to achieve it. And, and just let me repeat what I said. Everyone else helps him to achieve it. It ain't just Biden, my friends. He's not the, he's not the be-all and end-all of the administration. He's the head of the administration, but he doesn't work alone. He doesn't work in a vacuum. He has to have help from other people in the party, in his administration, to help him get things done. Okay? So, yeah. 
the the Biden did well as president, but so the administration uh, as well. Okay, it ain't just all on Biden that the successes of uh, of his administration uh, created. That's why when we pick our leaders, we make sure they're decent leaders. That way, they pick good uh, uh, staff. That they pick staff that are that willing to work with him to get things done. They wouldn't pick staff if they didn't need him, right? If the president was a king, he wouldn't have to have a staff. <laughs> okay, but he has to have a staff, and everybody does their part in getting things done. And at the end of the day, he takes the credit. But really, the credit can be spread around to a lot of different people that were working with him. So let's not forget about that. Um, and, and the thing of it is, is that, you know, Biden, you know, he was good in the debate against Trump the first time, okay, when, when, uh, when Trump was running for re-election. Biden wiped the floor with him, got him to say some pretty incriminating things. He couldn't do that this time. That's, see, that's how fast a person's uh, abilities can deteriorate over time, just in four years now. Not even that. Well, yeah, maybe four years. Okay. In just four years' time, his mental faculties have already diminished. Okay. Now, we had this conversation in America about Ronald Reagan, that he was already beginning to suffer with uh, Alzheimer's when he ran for the first time as president. Okay. By the time he was finished, uh, people were doing things for him, okay, in his last couple of years in office. You know, he just they just wrote him speeches to say because he could deliver them well as being an actor that he was. But he really wasn't doing much of the work. People around him, you know, Cheney and, and Rumsfeld and some of these other people, they were there helping him. All right? They were there helping him. And so... Uh, Reagan just ended up being a figurehead. Well, that's probably what's going to happen with Biden if he if he becomes president again. You know, his faculties will diminish, and everyone's going to have to run uh, run his job for him because he's not he's only going to be able to just deliver speeches when he needs to deliver them. But you know, uh, and so you what you really want is a staff that's going to be capable of picking up uh, the slack for him. Okay. So if you're voting, if you're going to vote for Biden, you're really voting for his staff. You're really voting for his administration. Uh, Biden will give the speeches that he needs to give in order to explain to the public where his administration wants to go. Okay, but uh, you're really not going to have to. Ex you can't really expect him, you know, after another four years to be able uh, to do uh, much of the legwork. Okay, uh, so. You know, I know it sounds, I, for those of you listening, it's probably sounding like, oh, Christ almighty, it's defeatism. No, it ain't defeatism, okay? I'm being honest with all of you, okay? I really am. And Trump should have been an easy, easy beat last night because after the debate was over, okay, which is ridiculous after, because nobody watches the after show when an after show was after a debate is done. But CNN... Uh, had brought out uh, Daniel Dale from CNN, okay? They had brought him out. And he gave a breakdown on the lies that Trump said throughout the fucking debate. And they were numerous lies, okay? They were, he counted over 30. It was more than 30, but he, he had 30 listed that he wanted to, to just point out to the people watching. Okay, so here's a video clip of that. He said some Democratic states allow people to execute babies after birth, an egregious lie that is illegal in every state. He said everybody, even Democrats, wanted Roe v. Wade overturned. Roe was supported by two-thirds of Americans, even more Democrats. He said every legal scholar wanted Roe overturned, abortion returned to the states. Legal scholars have told me directly this is not true. He said the U.S. currently has the biggest budget deficit ever. No, that happened under Trump in 2020. He said the U.S. currently has a record trade deficit with China. That also happened under Trump in 2020. 
2018. He said Biden personally gets a lot of money from China, zero evidence of this. He said there were no terror attacks during his presidency. In fact, there were multiple attacks. He said Iran didn't fund Hamas, Hezbollah, other terror groups under his presidency. Iran, in fact, did. He said Biden wants to quadruple people's taxes. That is pure fiction. He said the U.S. has provided way more aid to Ukraine than Europe had. It's actually the opposite. He said the U.S. Provi has provided about 200 billion in Ukraine aid. It's closer to 110 billion. Uh, he said 18 or 19 million people have crossed the border under Biden. That is millions too high. He said many of these migrants are from prisons or mental institutions. His own campaign cannot corroborate this. He said Biden has only created jobs for illegal immigrants. Total nonsense. He said Nancy Pelosi turned down his offer of 10,000 National Guard troops on January 6th. There's no evidence she even got such an offer. It was the president, not Pelosi, who had the power to deploy the D.C. Guard. He said Pelosi now acknowledges she turned down the troops. No, her office tell me, tells me this claim is still a lie. He said he deployed the National Guard to Minneapolis in 2020. Actually, that was the Democratic governor. He spoke of, quote, ridiculous fraud in the 2020 election. Zero evidence of any widespread fraud. He said NATO was going out of business before he took office. Completely, clearly absurd. He said the U.S. was paying 100 percent of NATO before he came along. The U.S. made up about 71 percent of NATO defense spending, not 100. He said he, not Biden, is the one who lowered insulin prices in Medicare. He did it for some seniors, but Biden did it for far more. He said Biden indicted him. Again, no evidence Biden has had a personal role in any of these four prosecutions. He said Europe takes no U.S. cars. Just not true. He spoke of food prices quadrupling under Biden. That's a wild exaggeration, though they are up. He said Biden made up the idea he called dead service members suckers and losers. No, the Atlantic magazine reported that, and then former Trump chief of staff John Kelly corroborated it. He said Biden called black people, quote, super predators for 10 years. Biden never once deployed that phrase, let alone for 10 years, though he did at least once speak of, quote, predators without specifying as about black people. He said his Trump tax cut was the largest in U.S. history. Not true, though, in fairness, Biden, Biden also said this. Uh, Trump said China and others stopped buying from Iran under him. China never stopped. He revived his pet lie. I don't know how many times I've done it, that he signed the Veterans Choice Program into law. Barack Obama did that in 2014. Trump signed an expanded version in 2018. And finally, Trump said Biden got rid of that veterans program. Biden has not done that. So you, you see what I mean? <laughs> Uh, Trump spent that whole night last night lie, 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 lie. And why did he do that? Because he knew, he fucking knew that it, the only way you're going to be able to defeat Biden, okay, because I guess they were expecting Biden to come out in better shape than he did. The only way you're going to defeat him is to pepper him with a ton of lies. Don't give him a chance to fucking say any, uh, any comeback, okay? And it worked. Biden was flustered, you know. His, his, you know, he was, he didn't know what to do because he was being inundated with all kinds of, you know, one lie after another and he couldn't come back on that. You know, he couldn't, he just couldn't keep up with Trump in that. All right. Uh, and in the, in the first debate that he had with him when they were running together, uh, you know, against uh, each other for presidency, I remember Joe Biden had told him, will you shut up, man? You know, even then he couldn't, he couldn't really keep up with Trump in his lie. Trump has that ability, people to lie, lie, lie like you wouldn't believe. I mean, he doesn't tell the truth for anything. Why tell the truth when a lie will do? That's his philosophy. Why tell the truth? You know, he's a compulsive liar. And his his nieces said that, you know, in, in, in podcasts that she does now on YouTube and stuff. She talks all the time about her uncle and how fucking nuts he is, okay? Um, he lies more than, than he tells the truth, if any, okay? And because he's done that his whole life, he's so well practiced at doing that that he can stand on a stage and just toss out one fucking lie after another. Now, do you think the Republicans that were watching this at home gave a shit about that? No, because they were there to watch to see if Biden could handle it. They wanted to see Biden trip up. They wanted to see Biden falter. Okay, they, they didn't care what Trump was telling him was true or not. Okay, and neither did the media. Because if you remember when they were, they said that one of the conditions of the uh, the debate was they weren't going to fact check anything anybody said okay so in other words they knew trump was going to lie they knew trump was going to lie like a fucking fish they knew they knew they knew so they weren't going to waste their time arguing with him and taking away from the president by saying no trump this is not what happened no trump you know because if you remember uh, chris wallace uh, got into a fucking argument practically with with the both of them because you know Trump was lying so much they were you know they were having this back and forth and Chris Wallace was trying to bring order to that and they you know he was like well you guys just shut you know he was losing his cool well they said we're not going to do that this time 
If Trump wants to lie, we're going to let him lie. Okay? <laughs> so, in other words, you know, they're gonna, they were, they, what they did last night on the debate is what they've been doing all year long, is they don't challenge Trump on anything that he says. Okay? They never do. Oh, Fox News is always out there to, tr to step all over Biden whenever they can find a way to do it. But the other side, you know, they give them they give them way too many breaks. They give them way Trump way too many breaks. They don't go after Trump whenever he t he puts his foot in his mouth. Okay, they never do that. Okay, did they go and fight to have cameras in the courtroom during the fucking uh, trial for you know for this uh, uh, tax shit and all that that he did in New York? No, no, no. They 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 wouldn't fight for that. No, no. They said they decided they they just weren't gonna. You know, that the law in the state says they couldn't have cameras in there, okay? So, uh, you know, they, again, letting Trump, you know, and then, of course, but they were there in the hallway after every every day taking up, uh, taking his lies, every statement that he was given after his case, you know, after the day, and he'd come out and he'd, and he'd vomit and his bullshit's come out, all right, uh, and letting him uh, disseminate threats and lies and shit. No, they wouldn't say anything about that. You know, so he gets so many freebies with the press because they want this to be a horse race. They, they know, even though he's a despicable human being, he still brings them money. He still brings them ratings. And that is more important to the media these days than the truth. Okay? And that's the reason why they weren't going to fact check him last night. They didn't care that he was going to lie. What they wanted was a shit show because that's what people tune in for. Okay, I don't know how many people watched that fucking thing last night. Okay, I really don't. Uh, but you know, I uh, <coughs> let me pull this thing up here on the internet. Uh, they do like these little polls where you actually have to answer. Okay, the question. Okay, um, and this is this is comes from the U.S. newscaster. Okay, and you see, I have the thing right here where they asked the question. At the time that I answered this thing, okay, which they, you know, you get that once in a while, uh, the question was, who do you think won the, the presidential debate last night and why? Okay. Uh, out of 6,600 people who voted, and that was about this afternoon, 74% said Biden won, okay? 7% said Trump, and 8, 19 said I'm not sure, okay? I'm going to say the ones that said I'm not sure probably didn't watch it, okay? Uh, and uh, the 7% that said Trump, well, I'm going to say most people that probably answered that were Democrat people that answered that. So if it was mostly Democrat, then of course they're going to say Biden won, right? So I'm, you know, I'm just putting that out there, that out of six, over 6,000 people that answered that, you know, 74% Biden won. So if you're looking for a little sliver of hope, <laughs> there it is. That's the best I can give you. Okay. But from what I saw last night, you know, which, you know, was just, uh, not last night, but this, this afternoon, what I saw in clips and stuff, and of course they're going to pull out the worst parts of the debate. Um, what I got was Biden wasn't ready. He wasn't ready for whatever reason. He wasn't ready. He shouldn't have been out there on the stage last night at all. Okay, they should have postponed this if he was sick or something, whatever the hell, they should have waited. Or they should have gave him something, you know, to fucking, you know, like John Stewart was saying in a, in a segment there last night, you know, he was really railing against the, both these guys, but really after Democrats for being so stupid, you know, as to put him out there in the condition he was in. And he was right. The Democrats d shot themselves in the foot yet again. You know, and that's all you can depend on most of the time from Democrats is if there's any way to fuck up a good thing, they'll find it. <laughs> okay, they will find it. And that's why, you know, we, we really, we have, we got such a big problem. And it isn't just we, the United States. I mean, we, the world, because, you know, our president always has international dealings and stuff like that. And if the rest of the country, the rest of the world's going to have to deal with another four years of Trump, they're not going to be happy. Okay, Ukraine is not going to be happy. Israel, or you know, in the Palestinians or whatever, they're not going to be happy. Okay, these things are going to be uh, disasters that will be exponentially uh, increased 
with another four years of Trump, okay? Um, and this should concern them uh, mostly, I think, than anything else, any other country in the world, because, you know, with Trump, I mean, with Biden, at least you get, you know, they're getting some help, they're getting some sanity of reason. With Trump, they're not going to get any of that. Trump's already said what he's going to do with that, okay? And, uh, you know, I just, I feel like, you know, there's, you know, the choice is still a binary choice. Regardless of the debate last night, it's still a binary choice, okay? Because, like I said, you know, Biden may not be completely there, fa uh, you know, mentally, but his staff is there, you know, behind him, and they're there 100%, okay? They are there to do the job for him if he can't do it, all right? And so... When, you're, when you think about tr uh, administrations, a Trump administration is not going to be anything like, like what we have now. It's going to be loaded with all kinds of right-wing demagogues and, and extremist MAGA nuts and all that. I mean, and these people are going to do worse with Trump as, as in charge uh, than if uh, Trump himself uh, <laughs> decided he was going to run things. Okay, all on his own be, to be a dictator, uh, because in, in at the end of the day, Trump really doesn't know how to be a good dictator either. Okay, he he couldn't do that job either. But the people that he cho uh, chooses to be to work with him, they would know how to be a dictator, and they would tell him how to do it. Okay, so we're really looking, you know, at who would bring in a better a better administration. Okay, and Biden would be that choice because he's he's already got a. a an outstanding administration that's able, that's been able to get things done. Okay, uh, and uh, you know we don't see enough pictures of our presidents ever sitting down with their staff and ha and having meetings and and hammering out ideas and solutions. We never see enough of that because I think people have it in their head that our presidents are all dictators or or all kings or whatever hell you know, but they're not. It's like a it's like a CEO in a company. There's all kinds of fucking CEOs in in the room and and at a board meeting. Okay, well that's what a presidency is. It's like that. Okay, it's not just one one person that has all the authority. It's everybody chipping in. Everybody has a part, an angle, because the president can't possibly know everything. No president ever did. Even the best president doesn't know everything. He relies on people that he chooses to work with him to give him the information he needs to make the best choices possible, okay? And so, he has to be ex uh, expected to pick the best people to be in his administration. And Biden did his job doing that, okay? But uh, with Trump, you're gonna have to expect the opposite. He's gonna pick the worst people because, hey, they'll promise him favors, right? Give me this seat here and I'll give you some money for your campaign. Hell, Trump will say, yeah, yeah, give me your money, I'll put you, you know, he don't care. He doesn't fucking care, you know. <laughs> These people are there because they they bought their way in, you know. But their ideas, you know, their money comes with a caveat. And that's like, we're here because we want to make sure that abortion stays banned. Okay, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, whatever, you know, the, the black people have a less chance to vote. Or, you know what I'm saying? They're, they come in with an agenda. They each have an agenda already in mind. They're not there to work with Trump on anything except to make make him convince him that they need he needs to do this for them. <clears throat> That's what they're there for to pressure the president. Okay. Uh, but that's that's what they bring in. So at the end of the day, it's still a binary choice, a one or zero, a yes or no, a black or white. Okay? And with things going on right now, you want Biden's administration back in there again for another four years because what they started doing already, they need another four years to really get it going. And if Trump comes in there and trips everything up, then what started under Biden is never going to see the light of day. Okay? And the outlook, economically speaking, and, and this has already come out from some corners of our business world, they're saying that Trump's ideas could bring, you know, an increased inflationary rate uh, as if it ain't bad enough as it is. No, he could actually, uh, Trump could actually undo uh, the stability that we've managed to put together already. He could undo all that, you know, with his ideas. Uh, so, 
Um, that's it. Let me, let's go to a commercial break here and we'll come back. This is me. This is me. This is me! This is me. I'm Alex Curtis. I'm a lobsterman in Maine, and this is me. I'm Ruth McLaughlin, and this is me. I'm Eric Hopkins. I'm an artist, and this is me. This. This. This is me. 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 This is me. This is me. This is me. At the end of the journey, the main thing is you, original. Welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. The whole point of their immigration policy is to ensure political control, replace the population, get a different outcome. Matt of Fox News anchor Tucker Carlson under fire, losing more advertisers this morning after claiming immigrants make America poorer and dirtier. We begin tonight with the sudden departure of Tucker Carlson from Fox News. Tucker Carlson tonight is officially over and rebranded. Right now, it's time for Fox News tonight, so let's get started. Google apparently doesn't think whites exist. Every time something big happens with weather, it's climate change. They want to take away your stove, your refrigerator, your air conditioner, and they want to even take away your meat. Affluent white female liberals. Awfuls. Taco bowls. Donald Trump sells taco bowls. Does Joe Biden sell taco bowls? Here's how it all went down. Take a look. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold on. Oh, stop it. I think any other response kind of would have been a little gutless. This is liberal suburban house husbands. So is the government controlling the weather with laser beams? I hope that she's the Yoko Ono of the Kansas City Chiefs. You know I recommend that all men refrain from using straws. There's no indication of the nefarious intent. But of course, you've been talking a lot about the potential for foul play given the wide open border. I mean, you have a border that's wide open. No one asks a man to close it. Black Americans online, some of them are saying, I'm voting for Trump now. Because they too have sometimes felt they've been unfairly targeted by the criminal justice system. Transvestite uh, Recognition Day, uh, so called. Is Donald Trump at risk of being America's first real political prisoner? Primetime obviously has no evidence. But we're curious. President Biden was asked if Trump supported an erection, uh, excuse me, insurrection. The mugshot has breathed new life into the Trump campaign and broadened his appeal to black Americans. This is historical fact that slaves did develop skills while they were enslaved and then used those skills as blacksmiths, uh, as in agriculture, as Joe Biden ever dated a black woman. There is nobody who can move merch like Donald Trump. Uh, he can be president from jail if he has to. I hurt members of my family every night. I call it complete lunacy. Right, Just watch so us, we'll tell you both sides. Take a look. I guess we don't have it. Before we go, a little update on a story we brought you this week about homeless vets being displaced from hotels so that illegals could move in. Turns out the group behind the claim made it up. Donald Trump found guilty on all 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first You're degree. a criminal, Donald. That's what the jury said. Not the deep state. Not the Democrats. Not the Biden administration. A jury. Regular people who saw the evidence and felt sick. You're a criminal. And you did it to yourself. Nobody's ever seen anything like this. It's, uh, it's a shame. Your defense was weak because you're weak. They have no argument because there is no argument. 
You were too scared to testify. Because you knew Donald. You know. You're guilty. Guilty as sin. Guilty as charged. And the Biden administration has been more successfully economically interventionist than the than the New Deal. Close once again to the Fed's two percent inflation target. These markets that just uh, are, are running at an incredible pace. Climate investments, health care reforms, corporate tax reform, insulin price caps, prescription drug reform, and Affordable Care Act subsidies. Groundbreaking shifts in science law that's going to ensure that technologies and jobs of the future are made here in America. More than one million veterans and survivors are currently receiving PACT Act benefits. In America, we leave no veteran behind. From the American Rescue Plan that helped create nearly 10 million new jobs. And giving people in this nation, working people, middle class folks, uh, people who built the country a fighting chance. To rebuild America's roads, bridges, ports, deliver clean water, high speed internet. 15 million jobs. That's the strongest two year growth in history. And all this progress is part of our vision and plan and determined effort to get the job done for the American people. Got it. Some people have a deep, abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. And some people don't. People start pollution. People can stop it. Write for Pollution Booklet, Box 1771, Radio City Station, New York. Part of the entertainment value of a lifetime. I loved it. It was the best performance I've seen in a lifetime. I love the show. I liked it very much. He's a very entertaining man. It's well worth the money. Now appearing in Charlottetown, coming to Halifax November 6th to the 18th, and St. John November 20th through the 26th. back everybody okay uh, one of the other big topics here other than last night's debate uh, was the what happened at the Supreme Court here uh, over their decision that basically uh, overturns 40 years of precedent in how America regulates industry okay um, and I'm gonna read this article here to make sure that uh, you know you know, things are clear here about that. This is written by Paul Blumenthal and uh, Marita Vlachow from Huff, Huff, Huffington Post. Uh, the Supreme Court's conservative supermajority upended decades of precedent governing the ability of federal agencies to set regulations in a ruling on Friday. The court's decision, written by Chief Justice John Roberts, which overturns its 1984 finding in Chevron versus Natural Resources Defense Council 
will cause a sea of change in how federal agencies are able to regulate everything from climate change to artificial intelligence to labor and workplace practices. It marks a huge win for corporations as it will be significantly harder for the government to write rules. Uh, quote, courts must exercise their independent judgment in deciding whether an agency has acted with its statutory authority, unquote, Roberts wrote. The decision is also a major power grab by the judicial branch, which will now play a bigger role as the final arbiter over which new regulations are allowed to stand and which will be struck down. The ruling concerns two cases, uh, Loper Bright Enterprises versus Raimondo and Relentless Incorporated versus uh, Department of Commerce. Jackson joined her liberal colleagues, Elena Kagan and Sonia Sotomayor, in dissenting in Relentless, uh, which was a 6-3 decision, but recused herself from Loper Bright Enterprises. The issue of whether to overturn Chevron came before the court after two fishing companies, Relentless and Loper Bright Enterprises, challenged regulations imposed uh, back in 2020 by the National Marine Fisheries Service that required fishing boats to pay the salary of the federal inspectors who ride on them. Lawyers for the fishing companies argued that the court should not only overturn the regulations, but also eliminate the deference accorded, afforded to agencies to write such regulations by the court's precedent in Chevron. In Chevron, the Supreme Court crafted a doctrine that granted the federal government broad deference to enact regulations without judicial interference. It effectively stated that agencies had the power to enact regulations without having to wait for the courts to weigh in, unless the regulation was an unreasonable interpretation of the underlying law enacted by Congress that delegated regulatory authority to that agency. But Roberts wrote, quote, agencies have no special competence in resolving statutory ambiguities, unquote. Uh, quote, courts do, unquote, he added. Quote, the framers anticipated that courts would often confront statutory ambiguities and expected that courts would resolve them by exercising independent legal judgment. Chevron gravely erred in concluding that the inquiry is fundamentally different just because an administrative interpretation is in play, unquote. Roberts also took issue with, quote, the view that interpretation of ambiguous statutory provisions amounts to policymaking suited for political actors rather than courts, unquote, as a misconception of the judicial role. Quote, by forcing courts to instead pretend that ambiguities are necessarily delegations, Chevron prevents judges from judging, unquote, Roberts wrote. The court's new doctrine provides significantly less deference to agencies while granting judges more power to strike down regulations if the court determines that Congress did not explicitly delegate authority to enact the specific regulation in question. The decision is a product of the changing ideological and partisan makeup of the courts and the executive branch. Still, Roberts noted that despite overruling Chevron, quote, we do not call into question prior cases that relied, unquote, on that framework. Quote, the holdings of those cases that, spe uh, that specific agency actions are lawful, including the Clean Air Act holding of Chevron itself, are still subject to statutory uh, stare uh, decisis despite our change in interpretive mythology, methodology, unquote, he said. When the court ruled in Chevron in 84, the conservatives were a minority within the judiciary, especially the district and appeals courts. That decision gave deference to the Environmental Protection Agency to loosen environmental regulations at a time when Republicans dominated in presidential elections and more often controlled the federal agencies issuing those regulations. A way to empower the more conservative executive branch to issue uh, deregulatory rules for corporations. Today, the dynamic is reversed, with conservatives in firm control of the judiciary and Democrats having won the presidential popular vote in eight out of the past nine elections. By ending Chevron, the Supreme Court is making it harder for the Democrats uh, and their presidential administrations to enact regulations while placing the power to strike down those regulations in the hands of a far more conservative judiciary. 
conservative justices made this clear during arguments in the relentless and Loper Bright cases when Justice Samuel Alito alluded to the fact that the conservative interpretations of law are more prevalent in the judiciary today than they were when Chevron was first decided. Quote, would you agree that one of the reasons why Chevron was originally so popular was concerned that judges were allowing their policy views consciously or unconsciously to influence their interpretation of the statutes? Unquote. Alito asked Roman uh, Martinez, the lawyer for Relentless. Martinez agreed, saying that uh, the fear the judges would use more liberal modes of legal interpretation, quote, has diminished over time, unquote, thanks to the very, quote, uh, salutary developments, unquote, and how conservative justices have made originalism and uh, textualism the dominant form of interpretation. The court had already begun to move away from applying the Chevron doctrine in cases involving certain important executive branch actions in cases like West Virginia versus EPA in 2022 and Biden versus Nebraska in 2023. The court's conservative uh, conservatives tossed out new carbon emissions rules and student loan debt relief respectively for violating the so-called major questions doctrine which supposedly forbids the adoption of executive actions on questions of vast economic and political uh, significance without express congressional assent now the judiciary will have even greater leeway to strike down agency action across the board. The decision will likely have monumental effects on the future of regulatory actions across the entire economy, as courts will have wider latitude to strike down everything from climate change regulations issued by the EPA to competition rules issued by the Federal Trade Commission to net neutrality rules laid out by the Federal Communications Commission. In her dissent, Kagan said, the reversal of Chevron effectively means the majority has turned itself into the country's administrative czar. Quote, a rule of judicial humanity gives way to a rule of judicial hubris, unquote, Kagan wrote in her dissent. So, yeah, pretty bad. It's, it's pretty bad. Now, after years and years of corporations bitching and complaining about, oh, the government this, the government that. And this goes all the way back to the Reagan era and probably further back. But, you know, when Reagan would say, oh, you know, the force words to ever hear is I'm from the government. I'm here to help. From that day on, the government would became the enemy as far as the right wing was concerned. OK, they needed to get rid of everything that the government does and stands for to protect not just the country, Hell no. I mean, not just the United States, but, you know, the fact that people want to live a healthy life or breathe air that isn't tainted, you know, they, they want to turn this planet into a fucking smoking cinder just so they can make a buck. <laughs> okay. And the government has always stood in the way of them being able to freely do this. All right. Um, and now they, they're seeing, now they're getting their way. Okay. Now they're putting the, putting the responsibility of whether or not they should follow any of these regulations in the hands of a court that's dominated by Republicans. So we need judicial reform in the Supreme Court. So fucking bad. It's like a person that's been holding his piss for a fucking 24-hour period. He's got to go, okay? The Supreme Court has got to go or change whatever the hell way we can do it. And Biden, uh, if at an administration under Biden, would be able to seat more... Uh, justices in there than just having nine we could have 13 that actually does represent you know uh, what should be in there okay because right now they don't nine isn't enough uh, but Republicans are gonna are gonna sell that and say oh they're trying to stack the deck no the deck has been waiting to be stacked for quite a while actually okay nine nine said we've been living with just having nine on the bench but we need more than that now because we've got the populations bigger and you know and so uh, we need to have that. If we get a Trump administration, they're never going to do that. It's going to stay the way it is. We need to undo that because it's already doing harm. We already got the court telling women they can't have abortions. Okay. Uh, and we've already seen, you know, the death toll go up in Texas with an outright abortion ban. Okay. 
and how many uh, infant mor how the infant mortality rate has went up 13, 14 percent in just that that time, that short time when they enacted the ban. That's how bad it got. You think they're going to admit that it was their ban that created it? No, 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 no. They're not going to say, "Oh, well, the way they counted is all wrong." You know, they're going to they're going to go after the agencies that do the figuring. Okay. Instead, they're going to leave that ban right where it is. Okay. In the meantime, the people in that state are starting to find out that maybe their idea of an outright ban was not such a good thing after all. And it's going to take a little longer for them to, for that to soak in there. And they finally, finally realize they fucked up with, with uh, Greg Abbott. Okay. Uh, but there's already people leaving some of these states that have these bans. Okay. And so imagine when you let the, the judiciary decide Oh, you guys don't need to follow the clean air rules. You know, throw as much carbon monoxide as you want in the air. The methane, who cares? We don't need that. You know, or, you know, how about clean water? If your water's tainted, so what? Boil it for 15 or 20 minutes. You know, you know clean it up for you. You know, you're going to have everybody talking like Trump. You got, you got a sickness? Drink some bleach. You know, Christ. Put a UV light up your ass. That'll clear it out. You know, th that, that's what you're going to get from now on. Because nobody's going to be out there to protect you. You know, you go to, look like in Russia. Okay, let me tell you this little thing here in Russia. Okay, when, before we had the sanctions put on Russia, when they started their shit with Ukraine, okay, uh, they had McDonald's, had all these wonderful places to eat, okay. After the, the sanctions, places like McDonald's closed up. They couldn't do business there anymore, okay. Uh... So these <coughs> these smaller outfits bought these old these places up like the the buildings, and they started their own fast food thing. Well, because Russia has no, you know, uh, FDA or whatever like that to to make sure the food you eat is good. <laughs> this is what they did. The food left behind that was from McDonald's when they had it. Okay, it was still there when they got the building. By the time they got it, a lot of that stuff was moldy. Do you think they cleaned that shit out and put fresh stuff in there? Uh-uh. They were selling moldy bread, moldy potatoes, all this stuff to the people in the, under the new management in this building for another a fast food joint, which I can't remember off the top of my head now what it was, but it's some stupid name. People were getting sick. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and... <coughs> uh. And, of course, you know, when, when McDonald's was there, they had their own standard of practice of doing business there. And, you know, people were, were sure. I mean, eating at McDonald's was like eating at the Red, Red Lobster or something like that over there for them. That's a, that was a high-class restaurant because you were guaranteed you weren't going to get sick eating there. As for the Russian restaurants that, that weren't like American restaurants, okay, you took a chance. You eat there, you might come home sick. <laughs> Imagine living in America where, where we're like that, okay? Where we don't have another country putting their restaurants here, but we got to eat from the restaurants that are not regulated by the government anymore. You might take a chance getting in there to eat something and come out with, with some sickness that kills you. And they won't be held liable for it because there's no regulation. They didn't break any law. You can't sue them, okay? That's, what, that's where this is headed, that's, you know, when you put this, the, this shit in, in, in the justice's hand here, the, the, judge, the judiciary, okay, you put this kind of shit in their hands and they go ahead and say, no, you can't, you don't need to be regulated. You don't need to be regulated. This doesn't have to be regulated. Without thinking, you know, they're putting millions of Americans at risk. The, they are responsible for any deaths and any, any problems that come down the pipe. Climate change stuff they don't want to deep regulate that okay well then they're also going to be responsible for all the towns and all the cities that are going to get uh, blown to bits by freakish weather patterns and stuff because hey you didn't have any uh rules regulations to protect the environment from getting worse and creating these massive problems that you know we are that's beyond our ability to correct okay we're no longer going to be uh, leading the world on climate change, uh, on the issue of it, on how to how to deal with it. Everyone's not going to have to. No one's going to depend on the United States to be able to stand their ground on that. Okay, 
I think they're already pretty much thinking that now, to be honest. I really think that, <clears throat> you know, a lot of the rest of the world is looking at us saying, you want us to do this, you want us to do that, but you guys can't do a goddamn thing. You can't even agree on their, whether or not there is climate change or there's climate, global warming going on. You can't even agree. How can we depend on you to take the lead on com, uh, combating this problem if you can't even decide yes or no whether that problem even exists? Okay, what the hell do you think the rest of the world's going to do? They're not even going to follow you. Okay, they'll do their own thing, but they're, you know, the United States is always wishy-washy as far as we're seen on the outside because we don't we we constantly rotate our leaders so much that one day we're for something the next day we're not <laughs> okay it's very hard to depend on the united states to do a goddamn thing uh on the international scale and stick to it because we've always got you know people running for an, a seat to replace somebody else and that could change everything you know we, we just can't be dependent on and so this is another sign of now this is going to be even with the uh, the uh, the scotus here has decided that corporations shouldn't have to follow regulations if they don't want to okay and you know by doing that you're basically saying hey if they want to if they want to pollute in your area if they want to dump oil all over your fucking town okay if they want you to <coughs> drive vehicles that ain't got no fucking muffler or something you know nobody should be held to any fucking regulation people should just do what the hell they want and leave it at that and that way the corporations can make their money selling you crap you know uh you know what i'm saying uh i can't imagine a worse thing than to see you know the corporations in this country get their way in that way because you know we've we already have proof and evidence to show that they are a very greedy bunch of people Okay, when they fall on hard times, we're the ones that suffer. Okay, and I don't know how many of you are out there that went through the fucking uh, 07, 08 uh, <clears throat> banking mess or the, you know, the housing market shit, but we're the ones that paid for that. We paid for that. The banks got away scot-free. All right, they got, they got away from that scot-free even though they were the ones that were gambling on mixing bad <laughs> loans with good loans and stuff and wrapping them and selling them they were play they were playing a casino with our fucking money and they crashed the goddamn economy and and uh we're the ones that uh took the brunt of it mostly you know mostly because how many people lost their homes overnight practically banks said okay we need all your money we need the money now pay up everything you owe now they couldn't do it they knew this the banks knew they couldn't pay it up but no, it was a way to get their land, to get their house, and then they could turn around and, and uh, make uh, spin a profit out of it somehow. They were it was a win-win for them. <laughs> okay, even if the, even if the economy crashed, they could still get their money back in, in some way or another. But for the people living there, how could they up in their lives and just come back on an, you know overnight like that? I mean, there's no way they could do it. But they didn't care. They didn't fucking care, and so. They had the right president in office to be able to give them their fucking money that they wanted behind the backs of Congress, who had already denied them, no, we're not paying you your fucking money that you you, you uh, crapped out on, okay? No, they went ahead and made a, a, a deal in the dead of night with the president, Bush, at the time, okay? And the next day, they were shaking hands outside on the White House fucking lawn. Everybody got their fucking money our tax money to pay their fucking problem that they did. Didn't, did they learn anything from that? No. Did we tighten regulations on them from that? No. And they're back at it again. Actually, they, they were giving each other bonuses for Christ's sake with our tax money. They got so much of it back that, you know, so I even wonder whether or not they were actually truthful about what they claim they lost. They may have done like what Trump did over you know, overemphasize it, you know, jack up the, oh, this is how much we lost, just so they can get that much more back, which they didn't probably need. They probably needed half that to to settle whatever they claim they lost. But they got more than what they needed, because if they were giving each other bonuses, then their companies were financially sound. Okay, they didn't have anything to worry about. <coughs> but that's what that's what no regulation will will give you. Okay, and already people to this day have been bitching there's not enough regulation 
uh, in our economy, in our banking industry and all that, because for, for decades they've been steadily chipping away at it, making it easier and easier for banks to be more, uh, uh, you know, crazy with the fucking way they do business and, and uh, dishonest to the customers, <sighs> you know. So the last thing we needed was for this thing to happen uh, yesterday or today, you know, for, for the Supreme Court to butt its fucking nose into that, okay? I'm not sure why they felt like that, except you, you could expect that from the Republican judges there or whatever to say this shit. Uh, but I, I can't understand how the vote came out the way it did. You know, it's just, I... I <laughs> uh, you know... What's the government for if it's not there to protect us? Okay? Isn't a military a form of a regulation, you know, to make sure that our country stays safe, we have our standing military or something like that? You know? I mean, if, if we're not going to take care of ourselves, you know, in, in the other aspects of our lives, you know, that could put us at risk, then, you know, why the military? Why even have that? You know? Why not let corporations defend our country if they want to? They can create their own military, <laughs> you know? I mean, someday that's probably what's going to happen, you know? They're going to say, we don't need a national military anymore. <clears throat> Every The corporations will take, you know, it'll just be a further eroding of our government, putting all the power in the hands of the oligarchs, which is what Bernie Sanders has been uh, crying about, you know, since he got into politics. He saw the day coming. He's, he, he's been warning us for decades about the oligarchs, how they're taking over the country, how they're taking over the government, how our government is becoming less and less able to do anything because that's the way the rich want it. Because who, who do the rich answer to if not the government? Nobody. Okay, if the government isn't there to make sure these people uh, stay, you know, operate in the best interests of our country, or, or do things in you know that are in within the confines of the law, then all of us get put in harm's way, you know, because they hold the most power. Since money is power in this country, unfortunately, they buy our politicians. Since these people have that kind of influence, yeah, they need to be regulated. You're goddamn right, they do. There there has to be some regulation here because it's an unfair, uh, it's an unfair distribution of power when so few rich can have power over so many of the poor and the middle class, you know, that, you know, all the money that the poor and middle class could put together would never come near close enough to the amount of massive wealth the 1% in this country can bring together to get their way. That, to me, is not a representative democracy or, you know, a country that's supposed to be about equal representation. You can't have that, all right? That's not fair. That's not the best way to run a country because at the end of the day, you're always going to have injustice. The people who need the most help are never going to be heard. It's the people who want the most breaks that'll be the ones that are heard. And at the end of the day, over this issue about <clears throat> this matter here, the bottom line, everything boils down to just vote Biden because at least under him, he won't allow you know that shit to go... Uh, you know, to escalate, at least while he's president, okay? Um, vote Biden. If you vote Trump, what they did here yesterday, that'll become law under him. And, and you can kiss the FDA and all that other shit goodbye. It, that just won't make any difference. It won't have any... It'll just be uh, in name only. They're, they won't have any power over anything anymore, okay? They'll just be useless things that, you know, later will be they'll be talking about getting rid of instead of giving our tax money to because they won't do any they won't have any function in our society anymore so why keep them and then they'll just go away with the wind you know that'll be the end of that okay so yes this was a very depressing uh video here um but i'm still hoping that you know people out there will will learn something out of it somehow and just and just say that you know what happened in the debate last night, <clears throat> you know, uh, should not be the be-all and end-all of the reason why you vote for Biden uh, or not, okay? Uh, it's still the better choice regardless of how he performed in his debate because at least the people that are already working under Biden are, are working for us too. They're working in our best interest. 
they're not trying to take our rights away or take anything away from us. They want to give us something. All right, that's what they're in there trying to do. Otherwise, if you vote for Trump, you're going to lose some stuff. You know. All right, uh, so that's it. Uh, so everybody, please uh, have a good rest of the week, and subscribe, comment, and share, and uh, uh, keep your ears open for health-related matters. And uh, <coughs> excuse me. Treat each other nice out there, okay? Because it's really dark times like this require people to be compassionate, okay? Fighting with each other, taking your anger out at what, what's going on with each other, uh, it's only going to create disaster. And does anyone really want to spend the rest of the year in prison for something or, you know, or jail? No, you don't, you don't want to escalate. You're, you're making things worse in your life, okay? Try to focus on some good things. Do some good stuff, you know. Uh, really protect your mental health during times like these because it's very important. It's very important not to succumb to the, uh, the you know, the depression that comes with politics and, and what, what it brings, okay? Because there's very few things, you know, uh, to be happy about when it concerns politics with the way things are. Um, but just, like I said, take care of, you know, take care of your mind. Um, that's really a good thing. Uh, so anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Take care, everybody.